Have you ever wondered how access control works? How do systems determine what users can access and what they can't? It's a fascinating world, and it all boils down to a security technique known as access control. This technique is the gatekeeper in a computing environment, deciding who or what can view or use any given resource. Think of it as the bouncer at a club, scrutinizing credentials and deciding who gets past the velvet rope. But instead of a guest list, Access Control works with data, applications, and network connections. There are three major bouncers in the Access Control world. Discretionary Access Control, DAC, Mandatory Access Control, MAC, and Role-Based Access Control, RBAC. While they all serve the same purpose of controlling access, each does it in its unique way, bringing different strengths to the table. Now let's dive into these forms of access control, starting with Discretionary Access Control, or DASI. IDAC, or Discretionary Access Control, is a type of access control system that holds the business owner responsible for deciding which people are allowed in a specific location, physically or digitally. Let's delve a bit deeper. With DAC, the owner of the information or any object has the discretion to share it with others. It's quite flexible, isn't it? This flexibility is one of the main features of DAC. It allows for dynamic access control, tailored to the specific needs and circumstances of the user. But this flexibility is a double-edged sword. While it allows the owner to exercise control, it also depends on their judgment. If they are not careful, they might inadvertently grant access to those who should not have it. DAC surely offers a great deal of flexibility, but what if we need more structured control? That's where MAC comes into play. Mandatory access control, or MAC, is a more stringent approach than DAC. This method takes a top-down approach to access control, classifying both information and users based on security labels and clearance levels. The MAC system is a bit like a high security vault, where every piece of data has a specific label, and every user has a certain level of clearance. Here's the catch though. Unlike in DAC, in Mac, owners don't get to decide who accesses their files. Instead, that power lies with the policy administrator. They're the ones who define and enforce the rules, who gets to see what and who doesn't. It's a tight ship and it's designed to keep sensitive information under wraps. But as you might guess, this method can be a bit rigid. It's not always the best fit for every situation. That's why, for a more flexible approach, we can look at RBAC. MAC provides a high level of security, but it can be a bit rigid. For a more flexible approach, we can look at RBAC. Role-based access control, or RBIC, is a more flexible and efficient system. In simpler terms, RBAC assigns access rights based on the roles users fulfill within an organization. Instead of granting permissions to each individual user, which can be a daunting task in large organizations, RBAC allows system administrators to manage users and their levels of access in a more streamlined manner. Imagine a bustling corporation with various departments and teams, each with their own unique sets of responsibilities and access requirements. RBAC simplifies this process by assigning roles like accountant, HR manager, or IT specialist. Each role comes with a predefined set of permissions ensuring that individuals only gain access to the information necessary for their job function. This approach not only enhances security, but also improves efficiency. So, RBAC provides an efficient way to control access, especially in large organizations. But how do these three systems compare? DIAC, MAC, and RBAC each have their strengths and weaknesses. DIAC, or discretionary access control, is flexible and allows users to control permissions, making it ideal for small organizations where individual discretion is key. However, this flexibility may also lead to a potential security risk if not managed properly. On the other hand, MAC, short for Mandatory Access Control, is more stringent. With predefined policies implemented by the system, it's a great fit for larger organizations that prioritize high security, but remember, its rigidity might limit user flexibility. Lastly, we have RBAC, Role-Based Access Control. It assigns permissions based on roles within the organization. This makes it a versatile choice suitable for both small and large organizations, as it strikes a balance between security and flexibility. Understanding these systems can help you make informed decisions about access control in your organization. Remember, the best system depends on your unique requirements.